This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So let's go through now and have a look at how we fair value hedge account. We've already looked at the introduction in terms of what this whole idea of hedge accounting is, isn't it? It's to prevent that accounting mismatch of things appearing within different parts of the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income or the gains or losses being recognised in different periods. Uh, so what we looked at there was we looked at how to account for the instrument, and how to account for the item. Okay, and we looked at it in the previous video with regards to cash flow hedge accounting, wasn't it? Whereby we looked at how to protect the value of a highly probable future cash flow. So highly probable future cash flow, cash flow hedge accounting. It was quite, you know, it was, it was a literal definition, wasn't it? Of the type of hedge accounting used here we're looking at fair value hedge accounting and again it's quite literal what we're looking to do here is to protect the fair value of an asset or a liability okay so here uh, something that has already been recognized within the financial statements there is something extra that we will look at after that fair value hedge accounting applies to but for now think about it as something being recognized already in the financial statements whether that's an asset whether that's a liability, okay? Uh, the fear is that the value falls, isn't it? Particularly if you're looking there at the, the value of uh, an asset, okay? Uh, I suppose if you're looking at the value of a liability, the fear that it would rise, isn't it? Which brings in complications, I think, thinking about fears. But, you know, I will go through there and think here, it's a fair value hedge if the item is already recognised in the financial statements, okay? Seems fair enough, doesn't it? Okay, if that's the case, much simpler in terms of the accounting treatment, not as complex as what you have with your cash flow hedge. Uh, here, the gain or loss on the instrument, so that there being your derivative, go through profit or loss, and then the fair value change on the item, so the change in value of the asset, the change in value of the liability, the gain or loss goes through profit or loss as well. Okay. So hopefully, if it's perfectly effective, the gain or loss will equally offset each other, okay? And you'll have a fixed price. Uh, so let's go through there and have a look at the examples, not an example or illustration, but whereby fair value hedge accounting is usually seen. So very useful, I suppose, from an exam perspective. Uh, be careful with this one. Read it. What does it say? Yeah, you look at this. Isn't that what we saw before when we had our cash flow hedge examples? No. Uh, on your cash flow hedge, you're protecting the highly probable future cash flow, so the interest payment on a variable rate loan. Okay, so the risk there was that the interest rates would rise and that will go through there and cause you to pay more interest in the future. Yeah, we, we, we took out an interest rate swap, didn't we? Here, we've taken out an interest rate swap, which makes you think it's the same scenario. But here, the reason why we've taken out the interest rate swap is not to protect the value of the future cash flows, but it's to protect the fair value of a fixed rate loan. Okay, so when you're looking at your financial liability as your loan, uh, that value can change as the rates on the market change. As the rates on the market change, that changes the fair value, doesn't it? Because that then changes, uh, is it the present value of the future cash flows, which gives you the fair value, looking at IFRS 13, uh, which, which covers fair value measurements. So if there's a change in the interest rates, then that could change the value, the fair value of your fixed rate loan. Okay, so to prevent that change in fair value happening or you can't chip sorry you can't prevent that change happening but to do something about that change you enter into an interest rate swap again don't get too involved in starting researching interest rate swaps and the details behind how they work exactly feel free if you want to but you're just going to get yourself rather confused it's p4 knowledge okay uh, so the other scenario that you've got as well from a fair value hedge uh, maybe you enter into a form of contract to protect the value of inventory. So you're looking to, to sell that inventory. You're worried that the, the value of the inventory will fall and you will sell it for less. So therefore, you will go through there and use a fair value hedge okay? because the inventory is already 
within your financial statements, isn't it? Okay. The other one just to look out for, uh, and it does get people a bit confused. Uh, note that word, unrecognized firm commitment to purchase PPE. Unrecognized firm commitment doesn't mean a highly probable future cash flow. An unrecognized firm commitment is whereby you agreed a contract with a particular party to purchase PPE at some point in the future. You know, within PPE, there is a disclosure note, isn't there, to disclose uh, any firm commitments to buy PPE. Uh, they are unrecognized in the financial statements as you have not physically bought them. But here, from a, if you've then, say, taken out some form of derivative to protect that future purchase, it's it's going to happen, isn't it? It just hasn't been recognized as we haven't maybe taken delivery or made the purchase, but the contract's been signed. OK, so if that's the case, as it is more than likely that it's going to appear within our financial statements, we look at it from a fair value hedge perspective. Uh, you know, the, the risk that you have is that the price may change. Why may the price change? uh based upon the foreign exchange rates you could be buying an asset denominated in a foreign currency so therefore you go through as well and have the concern that the price will fall in the future and you recognize the asset at a lower value due to the exchange rates worsening okay so therefore the unrecognized firm commitment is treated using fair value hedge accounting rules okay just be on the lookout for it. I think it may have arisen in one exam at some point in the past, or it might appear somewhere within the materials of your chosen training provider. Okay, but there we go. So let's pull it together. Let, let, let's have a look at an illustration, shall we? Uh, so we've got here Murphy Inc. has a five million bond in issue. So they have raised finance via debt finance. Uh, and taking in five million dollars so debit bank five million credit your financial liability at five million uh, has a fair value at the start of the year five million but for whatever reason it has fallen to 4.9 million at the reporting date now it's a good thing okay it's not an asset you know if there was a fall in the value of the asset that would be a bit of a detriment wouldn't it to the business now here the value of the loan has fallen Yes, that's actually a good thing, isn't it? So we've got an actual gain on the item. Okay, uh, that item is trying to be protected because obviously we're worried about the value going up, aren't we? Uh, above five million, and therefore we pay more. Uh, but it says to mitigate the risk, Murphy enters into an interest rate swap for nil. Uh, so you don't pay anything initially uh, at the inception of the hedge. Okay, it's just a, a verbally signed agreement uh, that the amounts will be swapped. Okay. Uh, the fair value of the swap has decreased, which makes sense if you think about it. If you've got a gain on the item, you must have a loss on the instrument. Okay, The gain on the item, where does that come from? Well, our loan liability is decreased. A reduction in the liability is a good thing, isn't it? So there's a gain on the liability. So therefore, there must be a loss on the instrument. Okay, Again, just notes. The loss on the instrument is 0 0.12. The gain is 0 0.1 so it's not perfectly effective okay it's not uh if you like you've got a, a loss was it sorry it was a gain wasn't it on the item okay of 0 0.1 the futures contract doesn't have a loss of 0 0.1 there's a slight inefficiency okay uh due to basis risk if you get to to p4 level but let's not worry about that we want to worry about the accounting you will be given the numbers in an exam question. So here in the world of hedge accounting, uh, what have we got? On the fixed rate loan, that's the hedged item, isn't it? So the 0 0.1 million gain will go through profit or loss. Forget how the the loan is normally accounted for within the financial statements, even if it was there, maybe at amortized cost. No, now it is specifically being hedged as a hedged item. Okay, so any gain goes through profit or loss. On the interest rate swap, the loss of 0.12 million goes through profit or loss as well. So we're matching up the gain and the loss in the same period and within the same financial statement. What then happens is that you net the two off within the statement of profit or loss. The gain of 0.1, the loss of 0.12 gives you a net loss 
is it there of 0 0.02 million dollars so it's not perfectly effective it's not a hundred percent effective but it's effective enough isn't it okay uh because the gain on the instrument has covered the loss uh on the oh, sorry that the loss on the instrument careful has covered the gain on the item okay don't worry there's no issue here about effectiveness and ineffective portions and being taken to different financial statements here the gain and the loss on both entirely go through profit or loss and that's it okay that's it in terms of a fair value hedge okay nothing to it you need to remember the rules and then start applying your knowledge in any questions so work through the questions make sure that you're happy with first of all just this this general weird wacky wonderful world of hedge accounting okay apply it to your cash flow hedge accounting apply it to your fair value hedge accounting and if you can do that that's all you need within this exam okay we're literally just touching the surface of ifrs9 and hedging okay we could go into huge amounts of detail and how it works in all its intricacies within the real world you know here we're just looking at one risk yeah that it's being price risk hasn't it there's other risks that exist could we do anything to hedge against those other risks and therefore we have multiple hedges and multiple risks or oh, just sends a shiver down my spine that does yeah we're gonna keep it even at p2 one of the more difficult exams that you have at this level we're gonna keep it as simple as possible okay so always look at the item look at the instrument look at whether there's a gain or loss on the item and then use that to work out whether there's a gain or loss on the instrument and then look at the accounting okay there we go enjoy working through the questions on hedge accounting